Our B-25s take off to bomb Jap territory. Well, boys, this is a baby you've just seen in action. The butterfly bomb. Doesn't look like much. Only weighs four pounds and contains about seven ounces of TNT. But it's going to give the Japs a lot of trouble. And it'll be dangerous to our own men who don't know how to handle it. It's a good anti-personnel and anti-morale weapon because it can be dropped in large numbers and can be set to explode in one of four ways. It can be fused to go off in the air or on impact, can be set to explode with a delay up to 30 minutes, or can be set to go off only when it is disturbed. These are the drogues which act as a parachute. The side pieces turn the cable spindle. When the spindle threads are visible, the fuse is armed. This bomb was a German invention, and they used it very effectively during the blitz against England, as you'll see in these British pictures. OK, Jim. The Nazis used the butterfly bomb to delay much needed production. They prevented the harvesting of crops by sowing death for the farmer. They held up troop movement. They tied up airport facilities. Held up ship repair. Interfered with training activities. And generally used the Butterfly bomb so well that, well, we uh, borrowed it with slight improvements for our own use. Come on outside and I'll show you how to load them. Okay, Chief. Grab that in. Around this way. This is the M16 500 pound cluster adapter. It'll hold 90 butterfly bombs after we load it. The suspension lug guards come off before we can open the cluster adapter. You got a screwdriver, Mac? Sure, Chief. Then we have to cut this wire and push in the locking cup. Now here, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. This is a cross-section drawing of the nose of the cluster adapter. Here is the wire and the locking cup which holds the top and bottom sections of the cluster adapter together. We cut the wire and the cup can be pushed back, as in this drawing. Tie a piece of twine to the locking cup so that you can pull it back to the lock position after the cluster adapter is loaded. Thread the twine through the nose, like this. The butterflies are shipped 10 to a wafer 
Well, get one, Mac, will you, in that box there? Now hold it. Don't handle the wafer by the, by the metal straps. It might slip off. Here. Either handle the wafer on the flat side or by the cable assemblies. Always load the cluster from the center toward the end. Okay, Mac. If the cluster is to be carried double suspension, the lugs are all set. If the cluster is to be carried single suspension, remove these two lugs and replace them with this longitudinal brace. Then fasten the single suspension lug on here. These two pieces are always packed inside the cluster adapter. That's okay, Mac. After all wafers are in place, they must be tied down with twine, like, like this. A square knot does it. After each wafer has been tied in place, the metal strapping is removed. Now you try it, Mac. Now ease them in place so that none of the rigid parts will prevent the top of the cluster adapter from closing. Before cutting any strings, be sure the top of the cluster adapter will close. There, that seat's okay all around. Do we cut the twine now? No, first we have to pull the locking cup back into place. Never exert much force on this tool or it'll distort the cup. Now we can cut the twine. Let's pull it out on your side, man. This one seems to be stuck. That's okay, just cut it off. The M111A2 fuse is used in these clusters. It has delay markings from 5 to 92 seconds. When used in these clusters, it must always be set for 8 seconds or less. The fuse isn't installed until the cluster is locked in the bomb rack. A standard bomb fuse arming wire is used to keep the fuse safe until release. I get it. The cluster is dropped in the plane. When the fuse goes off, it blows back the locking cup. The cluster opens, and the butterfly bombs tumble out and settle to the ground. That's right. But what's this about always setting your uh, cluster fuse for eight seconds or less? See this? When the cluster drops for more than eight seconds, as this one did, the airspeed is so great that the drogues and side pieces are bent back the fuses don't arm, the bombs fall bunched up and are wasted. What's this one? We gonna load it too? No, don't open that. That's already loaded. That's the M28 100 pound cluster. It's always factory loaded with 24 butterfly bombs and should never be opened. All we have to do is install the fuse. 
It takes the same fuse as the 500-pound cluster. Do they drop both these bombs from the same altitude? Yes. Well, now, suppose that TBF is carrying a cluster of butterfly bombs, either 100 or 500-pounders. If the cluster is dropped from below 2,000 feet, the butterflies won't fall far enough to arm. If the cluster is dropped from over 5,000 feet, the butterflies will be too widely dispersed and won't cover the area efficiently. So the plane must maintain an altitude between 2,000 and 5,000 feet when the cluster is released. When the fuse goes off, unlocking the cluster, the butterfly bombs tumble out. Their drogues open, and the side pieces cause the drogue assembly to turn, unscrewing the spindle, which arms the fuse. Here's a large model with the actual fuse on the left. Now this is an air or ground burst fuse which has been set for air burst. Set for ground burst, the impact detent is allowed to stay up. Setting the fuse for air burst depresses the impact detent. When the fuse is armed, the spindle clears the release arm, which moves over past the depressed impact detent, freeing the striker. This bomb has the same type fuse, but it's been set for ground burst. It works the same way, except that the release arm is prevented from moving over to the firing position by the impact detent. On impact, inertia moves the detent down, the release arm moves over, freeing the striker. Here's a butterfly which has landed but not gone off. It has either a delay fuse or an anti-disturbance fuse. Neither has any visible identification. This is the delay fuse. The clockwork starts when the spindle is withdrawn to the armed position. Each revolution of the timing gear takes 10 minutes. After a preset delay up to 30 minutes, the stud on the timing gear moves the setting plate to free the release arm. The release arm frees the spring-loaded striker, which drives into the detonator. The anti-disturbance fuse operates in three stages. When the spindle is withdrawn a quarter of an inch, the timing gear turns until the stud on the bottom of the timing gear engages the impact spring. On impact, the spring frees the timing gear, allowing it to continue turning until the stud on top of the gear is stopped by the anti-disturbance block. The slightest jar will disengage the block from the timing gear, allowing the gear to continue its run until the striker is freed. You've seen how the four different fuses work. These bombs may kill up to 25 yards. They may injure up to 150 yards. This is the usual oval-shaped pattern in which a cluster of these bombs will land. In this way, the entire area can be efficiently covered. And they'll be used against Jap airstrips, to delay and destroy their troops, to tie up their bivouac areas, to demoralize their captive labor, to slow down their production centers. Yes, the butterfly may be widely used, and you've seen how dangerous it is. 
Be doubly careful when entering captured enemy territory where it's been dropped. Watch for them in trees. Watch for them on the ground. If you find one, don't touch it. Mark it and report it to the proper authorities who will notify qualified bomb disposal personnel. Don't ever consider a butterfly bomb a dud. Don't kid yourself. This could happen to you.